Hi, it's Nicole the Math Lady, and today we're talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing decimal numbers. I know there's like a whole lot to do with decimal numbers, but don't worry, we're going to show you how to do it. I think you actually know how to do it already. We're just going to remind you, right? All right, let's first start. I have an addition problem here with decimal numbers. So basically, Adding is just the same, but the one key thing when you are adding decimal numbers is that you line up your decimals. So let's do it. We're going to line up our 5.7, and now we're going to put our 0, and there's my decimal, 2, 4. And now I'm going to add my 58, because we know if I just say 58, the decimal is right after it. And we're going to add. All right, now what about that, that there's no zeros or anything around these, this 4? Doesn't matter, you just go ahead and bring that four on down. Same thing here, seven and two, seven plus two is nine. Doesn't matter that there's nothing there. And then bring your decimal point down. Let's do five plus eight, 13. And five and one is six. So there you go, our answer, 63.94. Take a look at this example. Point five six seven plus 23.72 plus point zero zero three. Again, the rule, line up your decimal. So let's do it. Zero point five six seven. Here's my 23 because my decimal goes right there. And here's my decimal here. So everything fills in around the decimal. Now just add as normal. Seven and three is 10. Six and two is eight. One is nine. Seven and five is 12. And there's my decimal. 3 and 1 is 4, and bring down my 2, our answer is 24.290. Easy. Let's try subtraction. Here's a subtraction problem. Now again, just like addition, we have to line up our decimals, but let's see what happens when we do. We have, so you can see my decimals, 24.3, and this one's going to be 6.005. Now, do you see any possible issues here? Well, we have to do some subtraction, but you can see that we have got nothing to subtract it from. So here's where we use zeros as our placeholders, and now we just go ahead and borrow as normal. 3, 2, 10 goes to 9, and 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 0 is 9, 2 minus 0 is 2, there's my decimal, and I borrow again, and I have 18.295. Here's another subtraction problem. Again, here's our decimal. We're going to line them up. Now we have a whole number 9. We have to assume there's a decimal after that 9. So here we go, and 0 0.3. And as you can see, like the previous problem, we've got to borrow by putting 0 first as a placeholder. So here we go. There's my decimal. There's my zero. Now go ahead and do the math. Seven, eight point seven. Let's try multiplication next. Let's start nice and easy. With multiplication, we go ahead and do our multiplication like we normally would, but then we have to account for our decimals at the end. Here we go. Eight times seven is 56, but we're not done. We have to count how many decimal places we have. How many do we have? One. 2. So now let's put two decimals into our answer. 1, 2. Put that 0 in the front. We've accounted for our decimal, so our answer is 0 0.56. Let's take a look at this problem. So it looks pretty simple as far as the multiplication goes, but let's see what happens with our decimals. 7 times 6 is 42. We can go ahead and put that 4 down, because if I did 7 times 0, it would be 0, and then I'd add my 4. So there's my 4. Now, we're done, because 0 times everything's going to be 0. But we're not really done, because we haven't accounted for our decimals yet. So let's do it. Let's count them up. 1, 2, 3. All right, here we go. 1, 2, wait a second. We need another place for our decimal. So we're going to use 0 as a placeholder. Now we can do 3. 1, two, three. And that's it. When, whenever you don't have enough places for that decimal, you got to put a zero in front to use it as a placeholder. And that's it. Multiplication is easy. Let's try division. Take a look at our division problem. So we have 0 0.123, 5 divided by 5. 
So what we're going to do is do our division like normal, and then at the end, account for those decimals. Here we go. 5 is our divisor. It goes on the outside. And 0 0.1235. Let's do it. 5 goes into 0, 0 times. 5 goes into 1, 0 times. 5 goes into 12, 2 times with 2 left over. We're going to put our 2 up here. We're doing mental math. 5 goes into 23, 4 times with 3 left over. So we're putting it up there. 5 into 35 is 7. Okay, so are we done? No, we haven't accounted for our decimals yet. So let's do it. So with, with division, all you have to do is take your decimal where it's at and bring it right up. That's it. Let's try one more example. Take a look at this one. So we've got 6.80. We want to divide that by 4. So we're breaking it into four sections. Let's do the division. 4 is our divisor. 6.80 is our dividend. 6.80. Now, you know how I said we account for them at the end? I have to tell you the truth. With division, I like accounting for it at the beginning because I just don't want to forget at the end. So it's okay if you want just to go ahead and write your decimal so you don't forget it. And now go ahead and do your division. It's really up to you. But either way, don't forget it. Here we go. Four goes into six one time. Oh, I got to do mental math. Let's do mental math. With two left over. Four goes into 28 seven times. Four goes into zero, zero times. So our answer is 1.70. It's really that simple. Dividing, adding, subtracting, multiplying with decimals is pretty much the same as doing it without decimals, but you have to account for those decimals in your answer. That's it. Make sure you try a few practice problems to make sure you've got this down good. I think you're going to do great. I will see you next time. Hope you're having a great day. Bye.